Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday, September 16th. Well, Wall Street is lower so far today. A drop in oil prices has weighed on energy stocks and financial came, financials came under pressure. In the wake of a massive $14 billion fine slapped on Deutsche Bank, Investors are also awaiting the Federal Reserve's meeting starting this coming Tuesday and culminating on Wednesday. While traders have very low expectations of an interest rate hike, investors will be keen for commentary on how the central bank views the recent sluggish economic data. The data and contrasting comments from Fed officials on rate hikes has caused the market to oscillate and volatility to spike in the past few days. So let's take a look at that. Our first chart that we usually look at is a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. As you all know, this is the ETF that closely follows our S&P 500 index. We use it because it's a tradable and because it shows us volume. So as we look at the SPY today, we see that when I captured this chart, it was trading at $212.86, which is about 21.28 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we can see that last Friday, and met many of you immersed in the markets remember this, uh, a week ago today, this market fell pretty darn dramatically, and we looked at it on that day, and it was on comments from two, our Fed governors that thought it was time to raise interest rates. Now, as I just mentioned, the FOMC is meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday this week, and any potential interest rate, um, well, the interest rate announcement will, will come out on Wednesday this coming Wednesday, September 21st, probably right around 2 p.m. So uh, the market thinking that rates might rise made it fall pretty hard last Friday. On Monday, it gapped down to about 212 and then flew back up in the face of that because, again, Fed futures are saying there's only about a 20% chance that the Fed will raise interest rates, especially on, again, the uh, disappointing economic data we've had recently. So the SPY has held down here with its lows coming in just above 212. It's held that support line all week long with back-to-back -back days, up one day, down the next, up one day, down the next. It's trading below its falling 20-day moving average, the red line, and its 50-day moving average. The 20 is about to cross over the 50 a slight negative. Also, to make it more exciting today, I added a trend line on the SPY. Yes, I drew right through the Brexit lows. It, um, it's technically correct, and they are my crayons, so I can do that. We can see that this trend line has been following the 50-day uh, moving average higher. So we have the 20-day, the 50-day, and the trend line all coming in here at a uh, convergence of indicators which can make for, uh, when, they're, when they're all grouped together like this, it can make for stronger resistance when and if the S&P 500 decides to move back up toward 216. Uh, okay, so we have uh, the RSI here, of course, is moving down following price. The MACD has now fallen just barely below the zero signal line. Uh, and, 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 and that's not an extreme negative yet, but it has happened. After uh, we get the Fed announcement on Wednesday, and I suspect that prices on the S&P is just going to go back and forth until that time, then the market will look forward to the elections. Uh, I think that promises to give the market some anxiety or at least some excitement in the week following that, uh, following the um, the rate announcement on this coming Wednesday. So I think we ought to be prepared here for more volatility, certainly in as we bring September to a close and get into October. Our next chart here 
is a chart of the PowerShares QQQ, symbol QQQ. This is the ETF that closely follows our NASDAQ 100 index. I like to keep an eye on it as tech stocks have been very strong this year. Some of the big leaders like Facebook and Amazon have, have done well to hold this index up. Now I want to keep an eye on it now. The Qs also fell Friday, gap down on Monday, held right here at about 113 and change, then moved back up over their 50-day moving average, which I think is resilient and admirable, again, mostly on the back of stocks like Amazon and Facebook. Um, when I captured this chart today, it was trading at $116.81. We had... Uh, Near-term highs up here, a little over 118. The all-time high on the Qs is $120.50, established in uh, March of 2000. So it's fooling around back up here. We have an inside day-to-day, -day, meaning price is trading totally inside of the prior day's price action. That means it kind of doesn't know which way to go. So that's what's happening so far. Again, I think the QQQ will, unless something comes up, of course, and it certainly could that we don't foresee, I think the Qs will probably trade in sideways action along with the rest of the market into the Wednesday announcement. I'm personally going to be very conservative, uh, not add a lot of new trades that I want that I intend to carry through Wednesday's announcement. Um, I'm just going to be conservative in the coming week. It just uh, helps me sleep better. So that's what the big techs are doing. Well, finally, we're going to look at the First Trust Dow Jones Internet Index, symbol FDN. This is an even closer look at the big Internet stocks that have held the, uh, the market up to a degree and certainly the NASDAQ up. The top... Uh, components in the FDN are Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, what we call Google, eBay, and so forth. Again, these are the big stocks, the big momentum stocks that have done a lot to hold up the, um, the, the market and, and, and the NASDAQ composite and, and NASDAQ 100. I'm looking at it here as I captured this chart. It's trading at $79.23. It is trading above a rising 50-day moving average. That is bullish. Uh, the MACD here has been trading kind of in a bearish divergence, although, of course, in all fairness, the FDN did fall down with the rest of the market uh, this past week. But it didn't come below. It didn't penetrate its 50-day moving average. It stayed above it. I believe that if... The Fed does not raise interest rates. It just could be that the FDN will continue to be strong into the last quarter of the year. But that's if the Fed does not raise interest rates. So I'm going to keep an eye on the FDN. I'm, it's, it's near all-time highs here. Uh, just a little bit over 80 I'm going to wait and see after the Fed announcement. And if it, the Fed doesn't raise interest rates, and again, I doubt they will, uh, then I'll see if the FDN is something I want to look at, possibly um, get a few shares to see if it can come up, break above 80 and 81, and continue its uptrend, possibly into the last quarter of the year. And now for the coming week's economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Monday online from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Eastern for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. Plus, we have a really great group. I think you'll enjoy it. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, not a problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members a few minutes after the session ends. And now for the coming week's economic reports. Nothing much going on on Monday. Tuesday, we have housing starts and building permits. 
Wednesday we have crude inventories and of course the all eyes will be on the FOMC rate decision on Wednesday afternoon around 2. Thursday we have weekly jobless claims and not much going on on Friday. Remember to join us for this coming week's Tony's Market Club on Monday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading knowledge and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner and this is The Market Now. Music